Cody, brother. <clears throat> so you see me like being perfectly calm and regulated? Yeah. I'm just fine, homie. I have Jesus in my life. I have twelve step recovery. Even though my therapist that I've been seeing, you know, weekly, sometimes more than weekly for over a year, got taken off my case. I have several other therapists on standby. And I've just spent many hours with the most incredible woman who I don't, I mean, like I caught feels for her, but like not because uh, I'm recently, you know, divorced and uh, emotionally immature, but because she's autistic too and sees that I'm not a problem. And all of the things that I had to apologize for and the tiny little fucking constraints that I had to fit within that I never refused to fit within in Taylor's life. I told Taylor <clears throat> dozens, if not hundreds of times, Taylor, I can deliver upon the 2% of the wildest imaginings and dreams that you have, but... I can't give you what you want that 98% of men can have because only 2% of people in the world are autistic, homie. And most of them are terribly fucking downtrodden and oppressed and live lives. Like, uh, uh, they're nine times more likely to die by suicide. Uh, uh, 80% are unemployed or underemployed. Uh, like 88, 90% have behavioral health issues. And I have endured a fuckload of trauma in my life, and so have you. That, like, just because I've endured trauma, I don't inflict it upon others. I've never inflicted trauma upon Taylor. Taylor inflicts trauma upon herself and then blames me for it. That's been the name of the game. Not for our whole relationship, but ever since the trauma around Israel being born and her almost dying and him almost dying, and I was handed this sweet little boy that they told me might not live. And so I could not be with Taylor, even though other people were when she was struggling for survival, the fight of her life. She even told me that that was a resentment that she held on to that she never managed to move past. I don't need to ever have sex with anyone again, homie. I've fucking done all that. I just need to be seen as valid, as worthy, as a human being. I need to know that my f past and my traumas and my mistakes and my failures and what I've built myself up from coming from the same kind of traumas and sick fucking twisted shit that happens on these streets that you did that doesn't define me, brother and that's just it is it doesn't define you either it really doesn't you have a choice right now to become something greater than the sum of all your mistakes. You won't always want what you'll never have, and you won't always live in regret. I have zero regrets with Taylor. And the fact that I bombed, you know, by looking crazy in a, you know, custody suit for what Taylor's lawyer just totally jumped the gun on, just like you did when he didn't realize you were being completely fucking manipulated, because the only person in the world that I would manipulate or coerce is a violent sociopath trying to harm not just me, but my family, which I saw through from the gate, by the way, and the only person that I would ever possibly commit violence upon would be to save people that I love from imminent threat of danger or harm or forcible felony, which a sociopath saying I'm holding his pocket, 
you and I, you've been in the joint way fucking more than me, homie, but you PC'd up way fucking quicker than I did because you got scared, and you should get scared. Just like any man who threatens another man's wife or son should be terrified. But that doesn't mean that I'm a danger to Taylor or a danger to Israel or a danger to anybody else. Shit, I had the cops come to my house so many times recently. I didn't go to jail. You called the cops on me. Taylor called the cops on me. Another person who's a therapist in my life that thinks that they are somehow loving me by their actions when they are really not uh, called the cops on me. You know what happens when you make a quarter million dollars a year and you drive a BMW and you live in a million dollar house and the cops show up? Nothing. Just like you inflicted domestic violence upon enough women. You have a shitload of restraining orders, but you think you're slick enough that you don't have any rapo weirdo charges. But I could walk mainline and fucking walla walla, homie. You're soft as fucking paper and you PC'd up. And that's the violence of jail and sociopathy. In the real world where I operate within, I forgive you, man. And when I say you can come to my house, I would be willing to take you out to dinner, coffee, lunch, take you to a meeting, help you find a therapist. This anger and this spite and this resentment that you have in your heart, brother, even though you meant to do me harm and you meant it, and you know what? My reaction to your obvious threat that you claimed to have a foothold in my wife's life, regardless of the fact that you did not actually have that foothold, you are never going to be a threat to me because I'm a man of God and I'm a man of peace. And here I am as a peaceful man telling you that I will be your brother. I don't have to be your enemy. I will help you make something of your life that is more than fucking being somebody's fucking, you know, fucking, you know, punking somebody out or somebody holding your pocket or snitch or bitch shit fucking whatever, dude. You do not have to let any of that define you. You have the capacity to become a better person. And... You can take baby steps. I will match your enthusiasm. You're trying to destroy my life and pour gasoline on the fire that Taylor lit when everything in our life was perfect for a moment, bud. But you know what? It never was going to work and it never was going to last. No matter how genuine and good and kind and a good father I am, because I'm incapable of enduring abuse without dishing it back out because that's my trauma response. And when people are in my life that are not abusing me, I don't know, like my son, for example, I will not revisit any of my sins upon my son or any of my father's sins upon my son. And I'm going to have to blow a whole bunch of money and probably have to ask for accommodations from the court to get an attorney appointed because nobody wants to be the attorney of a crazy person because I, despite my economic advantage, am disabled. I suffer from a disability that impacts my behavior. And you, as a person who's endured as much trauma as you have, a person who has a disability that impacts their behavior and unless somebody in your life is willing to show you the kind of love that I'm trying to show you you're never going to get better brother things will never get better for you not until you make the right choices you don't have the capacity to make the right choices until somebody believes in you and loves on you enough 
that you believe in yourself and you love on yourself. God bless you, brother. Godspeed. I hope that you find the desires of your heart. I hope that you find healing. I hope that you find peace. I imagine that your life has been even more trauma and struggle and war than mine has been. And you were a little child that had to endure all of that and you didn't have a voice and you didn't have a choice and it's not your fault. It's not your fault, brother. And I love you. And I hope that you can make the steps towards finding peace and wellness, realizing that you were trying to burn my life down and you threatened my family and you can try to claim that what you did was not a threat to my family, but any reasonably culturally competent, uh, I don't know, uh, cultural consult, clinical expert, objective third party, you know, that I can afford, of course, because uh, I kind of have unlimited money. I mean, not as much as my wife has from her grandparents, but that's what's cool about the course, dude, is that it's not about opinions, it's about facts. And there's an adjudicator of fact. And I am not scared at all, dude. Because if what I did, trying to love you out of the darkness and the pit and the despair and the misery that your life has been, everybody matching violence with violence with violence with violence, here I am telling you, I do not want any violence towards you. If you came here intending me violence, kill me. Doesn't matter. And with my bomb mask, gasping breath, I apologize for bleeding on your shirt. That's way fucking harder than the hardest dude walking me in line, homie. That's some Jesus shit right there, dude. Jesus loves you. I love you. And even if you believe in Odin, God believes in you and your capacity to change. I believe in you and your capacity to change. And I am more than willing to reach out and help you where you are at and help you become the man that you want to be. And I see this kid in your fucking background, the man that your child can be proud of and break the generational curses upon your family as well. You don't have to even talk about the spiritual side of it. Simply the trauma and the behavioral side of it. You are valid. You are worthy. You are loved. You deserve to have a life of peace and fulfillment. You deserve everything. And if you could perceive yourself the way that I perceive you, it would probably fix a lot of your life's problems. So, hey man, if you're ever up in Spokane, hit me up. I'll catch coffee with you. doesn't matter if you want to shoot me in the face or slit my throat or fucking if you want some of what I have and you're willing to take the path to get it. It's worth me having to not be able to see my son for a while because I look like a crazy person. You know, the best of us are crazy. But you can go from violent sociopathy too regular crazy pretty quick if you put down the pipe pick up the fork open up the bible and go to fucking 12 step meetings and go find this god that even if you don't know more jesus christ than philip fucking hawking i would die for you even though you're my enemy i love you brother be well